welcome to the divine service here at Christ Lutheran Church in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. My name is Pastor Brian Falkenholt. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, as well as another important day. It's Mother's Day. We are reminded first and foremost that we are created by God and that God designed women as the special people in whom he would knit us together and form us. We are thankful to our mothers because thanks be to God, because of our mothers, we have been given this precious gift of life. However, while life is always precious, it is also sometimes very messy. Peter knew this reality. He wrote his letters to Christians who were under persecution. Some even had their life taken away. Today, we celebrate life and also remember that not all children will have the opportunity to grow up as we experienced in our Thunder Bay community, a teen's life taken away. When this happens, we feel weary. Paul wrote his letter to bring hope and meaning to the lives of those early Christians, and that same message brings hope to us on this day. All of life is precious. Preborn and babies and children and teenagers and adults and seniors we thank God for all lives, and we thank him also for that second birth, our new life, and that he gives us all that we need as we grow and are built up in Christ. Our opening hymn, 855, For All the Faithful Women.
on page 203 in the hymnal, Divine Service, Setting 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our musical anthem, Prayer for Mother.
Our first reading is from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, and chapter 7, verse 2a, and 51 through 60. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him, but he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God in Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 2 through 10 and will be the basis for our sermon today. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the, gospel, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue singing our Alleluia in verse 
If you have your hymnal, it's on page 205. to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him. And have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father." Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now for the children's message. This is a very special Sunday. I love mum do 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 do. I love mum do 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 do. I love mum do 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 do. I love mum. I love grandma do 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 do. I love grandma do 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 do. I love grandma do 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 do. I love grandma. Happy Mother's Day. One of the things that we all have in common is that we all have or have had a mother. God is the one who has made us, formed us. It says in the Bible that he knit us together inside of our mother. And so on this day, we are thankful to all mothers who gave birth to each and every one of you. And we thank God for this precious gift and designing life this way. All children have been created uniquely. Let's look at pictures of all these children around the world. Children grow up in different family groups. Children grow up in different countries. Children grow up in different cultures. However, despite many differences, children share the most important things in common. All children are created by God. All children are born to their mother. All children are created equal. 
even while still being special and unique. We as grown-ups pray for the future of all children. As we know, not all children will be given the same opportunities. However, as children around us grow, how will we help them? How will we encourage them? How will we teach them resilience? Equip them and then give them opportunities. Believe in them that kids can and then let them. Now, children, in all of the ways that there will be no one exactly like you, there will also be some areas that you all have the same. Look. What do you see that is in the same with all of these children? What are the things that are the same? What do they have in common? Well, we know that they are all children. We know that they are all humans. But what else do they have in common? Ah, yes, that's it. They all have eyes. And they all have noses. And they all have mouths. They have lots of the same things in common. Do you have any of the same things as these children? We also all have emotions. All human beings have emotions. Whether you are young or whether you are older, Sometimes our emotions are like riding a roller coaster. Sometimes we feel happy, and then in a little while we'll feel sad. And then we can feel super excited, and, and then frustrated, and then calm, and then weepy. God is with us every day in our work and in our play. God is with us when we're sad. He is with us when we're mad. He is with us when we smile. God is with us all the while. Now you sing that with me. God is with us every day in our work and in our play. God is with us when we're sad. He is with us when we're mad. He is with us when we smile. God is with us all the while. And now, back to grown-ups. We as adults can look for opportunities to teach and role model for the children in our lives that emotions are a part of life. It is healthy to talk about them with someone you can trust. As the adults, we can speak in a genuine way, even being an example of a sincere Christian apology by labeling and sharing our emotions and demonstrating at a deeper level how to apologize in a genuine Christ-centered way. This is how we as adults can teach the next generation. Children, this is how you can grow up with good emotional health. We all need to learn how to self-reflect. 
That is honestly seeing our own words and behavior. When we learn how to do that, then the next step is to apologize sincerely. We as grown-ups can start the change if we are willing to be the change. The children will learn from us mostly by listening to how we, the adults, speak our words. Grown-ups, I would like you to consider what it would look like for you to apologize sincerely to your children. For example, I didn't handle my frustrations well. And instead of calmly sharing my thoughts and also carefully hearing your thoughts, I took it out on you. I apologize and next time, maybe I'll go for a walk first or take some time so that I can respond instead of react. I am calm now, so if you would like, we could play a game together or read a book together. After all, we strive to focus not on simply what our children do in life, but who they are and whose they are in life. Today we heard in God's word that we are to long for pure spiritual milk, which is the word of God. That means that you children know that you are loved by God, your heavenly father, that you are loved by Jesus, your good shepherd. You are loved by the Holy Spirit, the gift Jesus sent to you. Next week, we are going to focus on how we stand and live by the word of God. By teaching you children that Christ is our foundation for all areas of our lives, we are going to be equipped to live as God intended, cherished, believed in, equipped, loved. We will also learn a new big fancy word, apologetics. Say that with me. Apologetics. That word comes from the Bible. It means knowing the reason why you believe what you do. Do you know how we would find that out? That's right. It's in the Bible. It is important that we read the Bible and pray every day. Hey, that reminds me of a song. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink shrink read your bible pray every day pray every day pray every day read your bible pray every day and you'll grow 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 and you'll grow 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 and you'll grow 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 read your bible pray every day and you'll grow grow Grow! Now I would like you to echo me. God, the creator of life, loves me. God, the creator of life, loves me. God, the creator of life, listens to me. God, the creator of life, listens to me. God, the creator of life, is with me. God, the creator of life, is with me. We're going to continue by singing our hymn of the day. It's out of the blue hymnal, Lutheran worship, hymn 475, Gracious Savior, Gentle Shepherd.
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be yours this day. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Each week as I look at the lectionary, I often wonder how the assigned lessons of the day will fit together with each other and with what is going on in the world. When I read the epistle lesson from 1 Peter earlier this week, I was thankful that God had yet again given us his word in a way and at a time that will build us up into him. 1 Peter 2, verses 2 and 3 says, Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk. All of us were born from our mothers. We all likely have women, whether it is our birth mothers or other women God provided, who have cared for us, nurtured us, and maybe even taught us the basic life skills that we needed to survive. Sometimes we delighted them, and sometimes we frustrated them to no end. Today, we celebrate those special women in our lives. Whether they are still with us or not, we are so grateful for the gift these women have been to us. We take time today to reflect on, to remember them. Peter reminds us of that when he talks about newborn babies longing for milk. One of the things that babies all have in common was that they all began by drinking milk. That was their first food. Whether they were breastfed or formula fed, it all comes down to the fact that babies thrive on milk. Peter wrote, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. What Peter here is doing is using the image of babies being fed milk to demonstrate what happens with new Christians. To set the context, we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, from two weeks ago in our lesson, where Peter wrote, Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Peter talks about being born again. That's a common phrase, expression, among Christians. The metaphor is used twice in God's word. One is here in 1 Peter, and the other is in John chapter 3, where Jesus is talking with Nicodemus. What it is saying is that being a Christian is like being born a second time. The first was a physical birth. God does the creating, as the psalmist wrote in Psalm chapter 139, verses 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Then in labor, the mother does all the work, and the baby is born. The second time being born is a spiritual birth. Our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has done all the work. God the Father made us. Jesus, the only begotten Son, died for us. And the Holy Spirit has given us the gift of faith, and we become a child of God. At each of those births, it is important to be fed the right food. A newborn baby is fed physical milk, which is the best thing that he or she can have from the mother. Newborn Christians, on the other hand, are fed not physical milk, but spiritual milk. Why? Because just as physical milk is good for a newborn baby, spiritual milk is just right for a brand new baby Christian. But what is spiritual milk? It is the basics of the faith. It is the food that helps to build the foundations upon a which a firm foundation, a mature faith is built. 
As Peter says, we are to be given spiritual milk for a reason. It is so that we may grow up in salvation. But again, what do I mean by spiritual milk? Just as physical milk provides the foundation for a baby as it begins its life, spiritual milk provides the foundation for a new Christian to build a life of faith. That's what Peter is getting at in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, which says, You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. This verse talks about what God wants us to become. He wants us to be a holy priesthood, which means that God wants us to live holy lives according to his commandments, his precepts. And he wants us to be willing to offer spiritual sacrifices, which means that we need to be willing to live sacrificially, to stay faithful to God no matter what it may cost us. Each of us giving from who we are and what we have all for the glory of God. The more that we mature in faith, the more likely it is that we are able to do that. We don't become mature Christians overnight. It is a lifelong process, but it has to start somewhere. And that's where spiritual milk comes in. It provides the foundation upon which we build the rest of our lives. So what is spiritual milk? What lays the foundation for a mature life of faith? Well, let's look at that by starting with the divine service. This is the time where the community of faith gathers to be fed by God. Usually that gathering happens in person. Unfortunately, during this pandemic, we cannot gather physically. But thanks be to God through technology, we are still able to gather online virtually. We heard about a gathering together about these basics of the faith last week in Acts chapter 2 verse 42, talking about the early church, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. It's always more or less been that way. People gather they hear from God's word, they share, they receive the Lord's Supper, they pray. Over the years, the style may have changed and the hymns or liturgy may have been altered, but the foundation has remained the same. In the divine service, in our worship of God, we realize that we are not meant to be Christians all by ourselves. We are meant to gather together. Think about this for a moment. The book from the Bible that we are talking about is 1 Peter. It's one of two letters written by Peter that have been preserved by the church in the Bible. 1 Peter 1.1 1, 1 tells us that he wrote it to various churches of Asia Minor, or modern-day Turkey. When those churches received this letter, it was probably read during the service, read to the congregation. It was you might say, the sermon for the day. That's why Peter almost always refers to the gathered community. All of the pronouns that he uses are plural. In verse 2, he refers to them as newborn babies. In verse 5, as living stones. In verse 9, as a chosen people. Again, all of these nouns are plural. This letter is written to the gathered community because the community is an important place to receive spiritual milk. And we also remember, as we saw in the children's message, that the gathering is made up of the entire communion of saints in heaven and from saints all over the world. An important way to receive spiritual milk is to learn the Bible. One thing that surprises me is just how many Christians are not that familiar with God's word. 
And I'm not just talking about new Christians. I've met lots of people who have been Christians for years, for decades, and they just don't get around to learning God's word. They may know that there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. They may be able to tell you that there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but beyond that, they are stuck. And that sometimes leads to some embarrassment because they don't want other people to know how much they don't know. And that might prevent them from coming to Bible studies where they could learn more about God's Word. And that's really unfortunate. Because being able to navigate your way around the Bible is a major key to maturing in faith. I know that I still use different methods, songs or acronyms, to remember where some of the books are. Or I simply just look in the table of contents. It's okay. However, if we want to learn about the Bible, we need to open up God's Word. It is spiritual milk. For Christians. One of the ways that we share, that we have fellowship with one another, is to create an environment within the church that builds up. Too often, churches have been places of judging and gossip and lists of those who do or don't. The Bible talks about a fellowship that listens and encourages that walks with each other through the joys and the challenges of life. In a church with that foundation, we can learn from each other, appreciating everyone's unique gifts and abilities. It is a great atmosphere when we set our wise and healthy boundaries and build individual relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ to lift each other up. That is a great way. To find spiritual milk. Another of the precious gifts of our Lord Jesus is his body and his blood in Holy Communion. When we are able to gather together and receive our Lord in his supper, we are granted the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. All that Jesus won for us on that cross of Calvary. We share in that meal as brothers and sisters in Christ having been claimed and adopted as the Lord's children and made heirs of the Father in heaven, just as we share that heavenly food. And now let's turn to prayer. Prayer provides spiritual milk that will help to lay a strong foundation of faith. In prayer, we are connected with God. We get to know God. It is something that we do when we gather in the divine service, but it is also something that we do when we are alone with God. Prayer is simply sharing your praises, confessions, thanksgivings, and requests. And God promises to hear and answer every prayer. That doesn't mean that God answers all of our prayers the way that we would like him to. Sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no. And sometimes the answer is, not yet, but maybe later. However we see his answers, the absolute truth is that he always answers our prayers according to his good and gracious will. And every time we experience God answering prayers, we grow in faith because we are reminded that God is faithful and just, abounding in mercy and love. For all of us. As Peter reminds us, it is important for new Christians to get that spiritual milk that they need so that they have a firm foundation of faith that can be created and built upon as we grow and mature in faith. But we all have to start somewhere, and when it comes to faith, we start with the basics of spiritual milk. But here's something else to think about. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14 says this, For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. 
These verses contrast milk and solid food. It says that milk is for infants, but solid food is for the mature. That's true not only when we mature physically from babies to adults, it's also true in our spiritual growth. The writer of Hebrews tells us that we are to strive to get past the milk to the meat of faith, if you will. So what does he mean by that? He says that this solid food of faith is connected with what he calls righteousness. The righteousness is about what we are called to do by God. It is the righteous life that God commands us to live. He goes on to say that it has something to do with being able to distinguish good from evil. A mature Christian, then, is able to distinguish good from evil. That's important because if you can't distinguish good from evil, then how will you ever be able to live the life that God has planned for you? You will not fully live out your God-given opportunities on this earth. To live the way that God wants you to live, you need to understand what is right or wrong by God's standards. That's what mature Christians do, and that's where all of us are aiming to be. At its very heart, Christianity is not a faith that is all in your head or all in your heart. It's not exclusively just a spirit faith. It's a faith that, that impacts all of your being, your body, your mind, your spirit, it is lived out every day in what you say and think and do. Mature Christians understand that. They know God's standards of right and wrong according to the Bible, and they make all of their life decisions based on that knowledge. But here's an important point. They also know the difference between God's standards and the standards of the world. And when the standards of the world conflict with God's standards, they follow God. That's not to say that they, we, always get it right. There are times when all of us blow it, even the most seasoned Christian, but the goal is to live every day closer and closer to the righteous life that God would have us live. And here's one of the problems that I see in many Christians today. They get stuck on the spiritual milk and are not willing to strive for a more mature faith. Do you know where we see that? We see it in the way people live their lives. There is an inconsistency in views of good and evil, right and wrong. Sometimes people live according to the Bible and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they live according to the standards of the world, which may or may not be God's standards. They just go along to get along with the flow of society, either because it's easier or because it feels good or it seems to keep the peace, or maybe it's because they don't really know what God's standards of right and wrong are in that particular situation. And so here's a question. Does that describe you? Do you see that in yourself? If that describes you, I have a word for you on how to deal with it. Go back to the beginning and be refreshed with some spiritual milk. Go back to the beginning because somewhere along the way you got lost. You're not the first one to go off track and you won't be the last. Now, I've heard many times from various sources over the past months that things are never going to go back to being exactly the same. Our congregation has been discussing many areas over the last months in which it would be healthy for our congregation to change and to grow, to throw off some of the old patterns and behaviors and to embrace the true biblical principles of what it means to be living stones, being built up as a spiritual house. Through the terrible consequences of this pandemic, we have the opportunity 
to emerge as a renewed body of Christ. That will mean being intentional about following all of God's word, both law and gospel. This will mean that those minor details of parish life, like where we place the sugar bowls or what food is brought for a fellowship meal, those won't be focused on or debated or gossiped about. But instead, we'll focus on building each other up and challenging ourselves to commit to fostering healthy relationships. This will involve opening up proper channels of communication where people are not trying to intimidate and confront one another with tone, posture, or waving fingers to get their way, but instead with wholesome avenues of communication where all people involved are supported by having another person with them as another set of eyes and ears in true and honest fellowship. It doesn't matter how old you are or how long ago you became a Christian. Sometimes there is a need to reset right back to the beginning and to take that spiritual milk again so that your foundation of faith can be rebuilt. And whether that is as an individual or whether it is as a congregation, once that firm foundation is built, we will use it as a basis to mature in faith and become the person God created you to be and the congregation that God has designed us to be. Based upon God's word, we will know right from wrong. We will be able to discern God's standards from the standards of the world. Then we will be able to live every day closer and closer to the way that God calls us to live so that we will fulfill the purpose for which he put us on this earth, which St. Paul reminds us in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 31. So whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. We continue in our service now by professing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Jesus promised, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Let us then confidently pray for all people in their various needs, the church around the world and ourselves, in our community and congregation. Let us pray. When we hear about and read about the needs of people in our own country, we are also reminded of the plight of so many around the world today. Provide them, Heavenly Father, with the leadership that they need. In your mercy, give them food, clothing, shelter, and community. We remember before you those known to us who call out to you in distress of any sort. Give them healing, relief, and comfort as fits your gracious plans. 
Lord, in your mercy. When we understand that the early church needed both lay and clergy leaders to faithfully serve you, O Lord, and the people around them, we consider the many gifts the Holy Spirit has placed within us. Open our eyes that we may use all those resources to preach the word, offer counsel and aid, and announce the gospel to our friends and neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. When we see Stephen's bold witness, even to death, gracious God, we recognize that the church is facing opposition and persecution in many places around the world. Protect and guide your people wherever the gospel is proclaimed so that they may nevertheless announce Jesus as the only way, truth, and life. Lord, in your mercy. When we, when we hear your promise, Lord Jesus, that your followers will do great things, we know that we need your strength and guidance so that we may do your will in our various callings. Protect the armed forces of our country as they seek to support it and protect us. Guide emergency and medical personnel as they bring about healing and relief. Bless farmers and merchants, musicians and artists, and elected and volunteer leaders in our communities. May they enable us all to rejoice and give thanks for each day you give us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, on this day in which we honor mothers, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, who have nurtured us, and who have prayed for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you, our Heavenly Father, who formed and knitted each one of us in our mother's womb. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 785 in your hymnals. We do change one word in the second verse from fathers to mothers. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. If you are interested in hearing an officially 
after the service special song. Please stay with us for one more musical selection. 